This McLaren 600 LT could quite possibly be the perfect example of what a realistic salvage DIY supercar project looks like. It has very low mileage, what looks like a solid structure, the engine runs and sounds very healthy, and the majority of the work that it does need could be completed in someone's home garage. And even with all of these things going for it, there's one major problem that makes it completely unbuyable. Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack, and five years ago I really wanted a Ford Fiesta ST, but they were selling for over $20,000 at the dealers, so I looked for a cheaper way and stumbled upon the salvage auctions. I bought a totally destroyed Fiesta ST with really low miles for around three Three grand, and I spent several of my own hours, paid for a bit of labor on the paint and body side, and spent several thousand dollars in parts. About eight, nine months later, I had a complete Ford Fiesta ST that all in, I'd only spent about $8,500 of my own money. Now, in hindsight, I could have done that build way cheaper, but at the time, I was thrilled. I had a car for literally less than half of what it would have cost me to go buy used, and it was registered, it worked, and I daily drove it for three years. Fast forward to today, the auctions might look the same, but the landscape is completely different, and here on YouTube, you see a lot more Ferrari builds than you do Ford Fiesta builds. And unfortunately, a lot of these exotic car builds just don't make any monetary sense whatsoever. You'll see people spending a quarter million dollars on a car that they could go out today and buy for a quarter million dollars and justify it with reasons like, well, I make content so it's worth it, or uh, it's the spec that I made myself so it's perfect for me. But those justifications really don't make a lot of sense when it comes to your or my money. Now, I'm not immune to making a bad project car decision like with the Ferrari behind me, but I try and learn from these experiences and make sure I'm getting a good deal because there's only two reasons to buy a salvage car to rebuild it. And that's either A, to save yourself a lot of money, or B, to bring back something that we can't have anymore, like a limited production vehicle or something that's vintage. The cost issues with this McLaren is extremely similar to most rebuildable supercars you see at these auctions. The problem seemingly began around 2019, well before inflation and supply chain issues. And well, the culprit isn't really with the car at all. And in just a moment, I'll break down the numbers and explain the red herring that is buying cheap salvage supercars. Now, I know the prospect of picking up a cheap supercar at one of these auctions is really exciting, but when I'm looking for a consistently fun time, I like to turn to my favorite mobile game, Rush Royale. If you grew up on tower defense games like me, you're going to love Rush Royale. Load your battlefield with heroes and let the adventure begin. You upgrade your heroes on the fly by merging them, and you'll need your team strong enough to defeat the level boss. Each hero is presented as a card, which adds a super fun collectible element to the game. My favorite hero by far is this guy right here. He's called the Reaper. He's an epic level card that can take out enemies in just one hit. As you get through the levels, the challenges change, which keeps the game really exciting and makes you switch up your strategy. It's what makes Rush Royale so engaging, and on top of it, you can play against your friends, play a competitive match, or a co-op game where you team up to defeat your enemies. To get in on the action, download Rush Royale for free using my link down in the description, or just scan this QR code right here. And once you download it, make sure you use my promo code, which you can find find down in the description box. All you have to do is hit the menu button and then promo codes right here. When you enter that code, you're going to get an exclusive bonus, including a master chest with gold, a set of cards, and some magic dust, which can be exchanged for a legendary card. Be quick though, these bonuses are limited. Now I've got to give a huge thanks to Rush Royale for creating the most fun tower defense game I've ever played and for also sponsoring this video. We're going to continue with the cheap stuff. I spotted something a little bit of ways over there, a car that you have told me you've owned before. Do you see what I'm talking I about? I see the Range Rover. That's exactly what we're going to go look at. I'm a sucker and for cheap Range Rovers. After that, I'm going to talk to you about this one that I quite like. The Hummer? Yeah. You can look at that Hummer. The Range Rover, I assure you, is much more interesting than that Hummer, but that Hummer is much more valuable than that Range Rover. Right. Now, this one this looks, looks really like nice. 2010, I would say, something like that. Nice. This one would clean up good. This is a strange car. Minor scrunch, scratches, I think we've and got, um, yeah, this is supercharged. Super, a lot of miles. Charger. So this would be. Suspension looks like. No big deal. We'll fix that. Yeah. How many miles? 158? 158,000. But you know what? I've seen a couple of these cars as of late. If they're kept well, like this one. I mean, look at this interior. Does it look like 158,000 miles? This is a nice one. Very well. The big question, though, when you're looking at a Range Rover is, does it start? Ooh. And it's not dinging. 
So I'm gonna assume the answer is no. Maybe we've got a flat battery. We've got the key in the ignition. This one is kept really nice for the amount of miles on it. This, this would have been, yeah, somebody left the ignition on in this car. Okay. Battery's dead. So this model would have come in between the silver one that I owned and the black one that I had. This has a Jaguar based supercharged engine similar to the one in the S Type R that I had. I think, I this think supercharged, yeah. it'd sure. be slightly more reliable, but wait Pull a minute. Lights. You know what would be even more reliable? Look at that. Look what's right behind it. Oh, wow, yeah. 108,000 miles. I now, Scott, you've been telling me this entire trip, you need a Range I Rover. Think Sam needs to do the new shape, Range Rover Sport. That's on what the this channel. Is. That's not a sport. This is not a sport? This is not a sport. I'm pretty sure oh, this is a, it sport. Is a sport. Sorry, I was looking at it from that <laughs> angle. Look like a, yeah. Uh, what discovery. do you think? Yeah, I don't think this is the right color. Color's a bit odd, I will be honest. I do not like that. But, you know, the color's not the end of the world. I was always told if you want a good deal on a car, you kind of just take the color. HSE, that it comes in. bottom of the range model. Nice shape. No shape. Got a strange little stain there on the seat. No big deal. This is actually, this is the car for you. Look. What's that? Steering wheel cover. It's gonna suit you perfectly. All right, all right. Enough with these Range Rovers. This is nice. What's wrong with it? I can't see anything wrong with it. This one's pretty interesting here. I don't know anything about this. This is cool. Every time I do a video and I walk right past these cars, yeah. everybody goes, why didn't you show us that Plymouth? And so we're not going to show them the Plymouth. <laughs> you said you wanted to see something over here. Let's go check it out. Yeah. And then we'll go find that McLaren. Come on. That's right, what we're looking right. for. I want to see what's wrong with this, though. What is wrong with it? Why is it here? I think we see it. We see the McLaren over there behind this really quite strange. Some of these cars are worth really good money. We'll come back to this in a second. This is the reason we came here. We've got a McLaren 6. 100 LT, a little bit of chewing up on the lower diffuser, stuff that you would expect. Now this car has undercarriage damage. That's gonna be the big mystery here, but I believe the online listing said that it ran. Clearly it doesn't drive with issues like this. This is quite common on these damaged McLarens. These wheels are really lightweight, so you see a lot of cracks, you see a lot of bends in these wheels, like we've got up front here. But the big thing, if you're trying to buy a car like this for a project, you wanna be more observant of the carbon ceramic brake rotor on the really damaged wheels. If you crack one of those, how much is one carbon ceramic rotor, Scott? Ferrari are about two, 3,000 pounds. That's one, one. rotor. One. That's US dollars, about $4,4500. Does that well, sound right? these will be about the same. So you're talking about darn near $20,000 in rotors by themselves. And so that is one of the really big things you wanna look for. This one is in fairly good shape. It looks like the caliper kind of stopped anything from going into the rotor itself. So that looks good there. I wouldn't be too concerned about that. The other thing we of course have to look at is the aluminum frame. Now I don't have a lot of room here and it's pretty common. I think VTune had it on his 720S. I've seen some 570s at the salvage auction where this just completely bends over. A lot of the aluminum stuff will just crack in an accident. We've got a little piece here. What is that? No, that's just some panel bond right there. That is McLaren special panel bond. If you look, this is very straight. I don't see any structural issues. So where's the major damage in this car, Scott? Undercarriage. Undercarriage. Says here, undercarriage. What this I is the kind of thing you would really want to get underneath this car before you bid on it and see exactly how bad it is. So what I would suspect, and again, I'm just suspecting, is that you've got a carbon tub it touches the ground, even if it scrapes. Yeah. What is the proper repair for a carbon tub from McLaren? Replacement. Replace it. You got to strip this entire car tiny, down. Tiny little crack, scrape on it. That's big, big bucks. And as we've seen before, you can repair these sort of things. 
Some people say it's okay, some don't. I personally would be okay with it depending, depending. on the original damage. If it's completely shattered, you've got chunks missing out of it, it's a different story than a fine crack or even a little bit of scuffing. Yes, they do total these cars out even if it's just a blemish on the carbon fiber tub. And that's likely what we've got going on here. In the pictures online, the engine cover was missing. We could see that in person here, that you just see the heat shielding sitting all right there. So this is a great builder, but the big question is what should someone pay for it? What should I pay for it? Because I would love to take this home. I'd love to figure out what's wrong with it. You have any ideas on the values of these? I've been no looking at idea. them actually. No idea what the, the LTs go for. The L and what this would go for. The LT is very highly regarded yeah. and it sells for a big premium over the standard 570 models. An LT in clean, clean title shape would sell for around $225,000 on a cheap day. That, I was gonna say that's a good price. I would have thought they would be a lot more than that. Yeah, so about 225,000. Obviously we've got something here that needs a bit of work. So considering that this car will have a branded title when it's all done, and considering that, well, we're gonna have to put several thousand dollars into repairing it, I think an appropriate price to buy this car at right now is in the low $100,000 range. If you have to have it, maybe, maybe I'd consider spending up to about 110 but you need a good amount of buffer room when you're working on a supercar like this so you want to make sure that you repair it right and you get a good deal in the end the truth is it doesn't really matter how much i'd like to pay for it it's a matter of what the car will actually sell for and even though i'd love to pay between 100 and 110 thousand dollars for this car at auction knowing that there's a good amount of fees on top of that um the comps are telling us differently. There's an auction data site that I pulled up three very similar McLaren 600 LTs that sold within the last year. They all have pretty similar damage, what I would consider pretty light damage. The first one sold for $125,000. The second one sold for $130,000. And the third one sold for $135,000. So if we just take the middle number there, uh, we'll stick with 130 and figure that this 600 LT goes for $130,000. Here's where the main issue comes in. Since late 2019, the fees at the salvage auction have gone up substantially. Remember I told you about that Fiesta? Back in the day, the fees on cars, whether it be the Fiesta or the Ferrari, were around four to 5%. In today's day, there's something called a low volume buyer and a high volume buyer. Now, a high volume buyer spends over $75,000 a year with the auction, and well, you can easily do that with the purchase of just this car. The problem there is, is that, well, you have to buy 25 cars in conjunction with $75,000 worth of cars. So this one McLaren and five of these McLarens would not hit the high volume threshold. Now initially when they changed this fee structure, the cost for guys like you or me who don't buy over 25 cars a year was 15%. People are buying 60 and $70,000 cars and getting $10,000 plus fee bills. It was insane. There's a lot of backlash and so they've brought it down a bit. The fees start at around 7%. The problem is trying to find someone with one of these high volume accounts to get a normal fee level again. Sure, there's big parts breakers out there that are buying dozens of cars a month, but you have to be one of them in order to get that price. And if you're gonna buy one or two cars, chances are you're willing to pay more for it than a guy who's in business to either flip cars or break them down but you're getting penalized because you've got to pay more in a percentage. If you've got to pay a broker, you've got to pay the escalated auctions fees plus the broker fees, which have also increased over time. On this McLaren, if you pay 7% on 130,000, you're talking over $9,000. By the time you leave the auction, that number will be close to $10,000 with a few more miscellaneous fees that are tacked on top of the buyer success fee. But hey, let's say that you get it out of the auction for $145,000 and now you've got to fix it. I could conservatively estimate that this car needs at least $25,000 in parts. I found the engine bonnet for sale online. It's $5,000, which I thought was actually not so bad considering it's a 600 LT, it's an all carbon piece, and there's not a lot of them out there at parts breakers. That's one piece. There's gonna be a ton of suspension components you need, a bunch of stuff like shields and trim pieces, body pieces with that front bumper is destroyed. Those things are expensive, especially on a model like a 600 LT because it is a more limited production model. So 
Again, easily $25,000 in parts. Now, here's the labor part. A lot of people always ask me, how much do you value your time at? And it's impossible to put a time on my value. If you DIY this, well, you're gonna save a lot of money in the process, but you might need to pay a paint shop for a little bit of work here or there. Maybe there's something you can't do or you need a McLaren computer in order to do it. You might have to pay a dealership for it. Well, start looking at busting out a few thousand more dollars anywhere you go. I mean, these are not cheap projects. And that's again where that buffer room can really play an important role. So we left the auction for the car for $145,000. Let's say again, we spent $25,000 on parts right there. And this is a very conservative estimate. This car costs us $170,000. Problem is at the wholesale auction, you can go buy clean title of one of these cars right now for around $220,000. Here's one priced at around $225,000 and the auction is valuing it based off of past sales of this same condition, same model car for around $214,000. Now look at this, this is crazy. Say that I wanna buy this car from the wholesale auction from the seller for their asking price around $225,000. I type it in right here and the buy fee here is just $600. No, not $16,000, just $600. And I think that makes a little bit more sense, don't you? Now, I know I threw a lot of numbers at you here, but that makes the salvage McLaren that you're buying today and fixing tomorrow a 20% discount over one you can buy today and drive today. Is it worth it? I personally don't think so. There's a lot of risk here and a lot of money involved. And the other big thing is that you have to come out of pocket basically straight cash in order to rebuild one of these cars. There's not a lot of people that finance salvage cars and well, again, you gotta buy the parts. So unless you're putting them all on a credit card, everything is straight cash. On the one that's perfect with a clean title, you could finance that easily. Now maybe I'm crazy, maybe you think differently. Let me know in the comments if you think 20% is a worthy enough discount, considering, again, you have to pay cash and you've gotta figure out the logistics in taking a broken supercar and making it a whole supercar. Now unfortunately, these out of control auction fees are applied to every single car, whether they're cheap or expensive at the auction but they're easier to tolerate and manage, obviously, on a cheaper car because you can kind of work them into your bid a little bit easier. Now, we went to the auction for a 600 LT, but it's the cars I'm about to show you are the ones that I think everyone should be focused on because, well, just everything's easier to manage and there's a whole lot less risk involved and you can still have a fun project and do it on a budget. So we saw this Mercedes briefly. I wanna know in the comments section, is this one of these ultra rare Mercedes? This looks like a big S-Class coupe I think if we look in the back, was it debadged? I did look over it briefly. Yeah, yeah it's debadged. So de what is this car? What are we looking at here? Is it super rare? Is it valuable? Because it looks pretty cool. And I know that some of these Mercedes now have come quite in vogue. Look at that, the Nokia phone, the mobile phone. This was an executive's car at one time. I'm gonna have to ask Alex Palmieri about this car and this one right here, the 300 turbo diesel wagon or as you would call it scott a estate, estate. yeah 115,000 miles that's just getting broken in at this point right absolutely do you think Very it starts oh good question go Let's ahead hop it. in my grandmother had one of these but not the wagon she had the standard one and they literally gave it away <laughs> There it is! Wow! Sounds pretty good! 115,000 miles. Not bad. Now see, this is the funny thing. If you look at the notes, it says that it's mechanically damaged. Remember we were talking about on that Thunderbird. Look what does this. that mean? I mean, it looks quite clean in there. No, it's... it's... Look at the dash. Mercedes nose. <laughs> Build quality, man. Look at that. This is really a cool car. Yeah. Oh, it's really got a comfortable seat, too. Scott, this is the one I'm most excited about. Maybe maybe not the McLaren. Maybe this turbo diesel yeah, estate. Refrack. Look at... Look at this. They left the garage door opener in there. Very cool car. This is a time capsule. It's got the Becker tape deck, which is exactly what comes standard in modern Ferraris. It does, yeah. Okay. We gotta give it a very, very light rev here. Sounds good. Sounds all right. Now look, what I'm noticing is 
The dash doesn't work. Look yeah. at the RPMs. Yeah, yeah, nothing. So I mean, so if you think about it, 115,000 miles, these cars run forever. It could have three times that. They just drove without the dash working. <laughs> yeah. No, this nice interior car. looks too nice for that. Wow. So while we're on the topic of cool Mercedes, again, bargain Mercedes, this is what we've got here, a V8 supercharged S55 AMG. Has some kind of nice looking aftermarket wheels on it. Clearly it's sitting very low, which means we either have an air suspension issue or it's it's got an air suspension issue. Let's just go with that. 148,000 miles. This is a very, very reliable engine as long as it hasn't been heavily modified. Look, interior is, look, it's, this is a really rare thing. Super clean. It's got a maroon interior. Or is that like, is that chocolate or is that maroon? 2003, it's like a, yeah, more like a chocolate. It's got the chocolate inserts on the door here, this chocolate interior, and it is immaculate. Let's see really what we got immaculate. going on here. Chip car, do not forget. We got to see if this one starts. See, this is the sort of stuff. I come to the auction for the McLaren and I want to leave with one of these. I want to see if I can start it. Look, the zip tie, look. Can't get the key in the ignition. If it runs and drives, Scott, okay? This car today, 6,000, 7,000. I say that because if it were an E55, go for over 10. The bigger body style, the less the AMG sells for. That's just kind of the rule with these cars. But this one is in exceptional condition, so. Hey, I really appreciate the beeping. I love the beeping. You're welcome. <laughs> Scott found another McLaren over there. If you want to check it out in detail, you can see it on his channel. The whole half opposite side was missing. Easier <laughs> one to fix that one. You think? I think so. I would reckon the 600 LT is in, it's the better car. Definitely, but it's going to sell for more the money. Better car, yeah. I so, think that might be the bargain. Look at this. I see something like this. It intrigues me. It says power base on the back. What's the chance that there's a full stereo back there? They probably pulled it out if there was. Um, Hummer H2. We saw quite a few of these things today. Yeah. But I wanted to ask the audience a question. Would you rather? This, this is a got quite a following to it honestly depending on the condition of course would you rather a decent condition cheap project hummer h2 this one has 215,000 miles and i don't even think i can get into the <laughs> interior here we'll put that back let's see what's going on here wow they ran wires all over this car look at this thing this is this was a power base model with well, it's missing the headliner. That's why we see the wiring running all the way back. There was obviously a custom system in here. You could see the speaker wires down there. And then they ripped out the entire custom console. Look, somebody fiberglass that entire thing. This is a mess. I wouldn't want this one, but let's pretend that we're in decent shape. Would you rather the Hummer H2 or what I'm about to show you right over there? Clearly the answer is this, a police suburban. I quite like these cars. I think, Scott, I'm starting to sound like you English. I quite like these cars. What do you think? Yeah, really cool. All blacked out. It's got the black wheels. It's kind of like a base package with some neat stuff. We got a speaker here. So what would happen with these? Would they take all the lights off? Everything like that? You wouldn't oh, yeah. use those legally? Yeah, the, the, everything that makes it a police car. Yeah. Like you see right here, it says yeah. K9. This was a police K9 unit. Okay, so. It's been removed. Police cars here, do they beef up the engines? Anything like that? Not really. No, okay, so it's pretty standard. What do you think this is right here? Do you think the dog had an accident or something in the back seat? Could have been <laughs> someone that arrested. <laughs> That's true too. Door panels are off. I think that's normal, you know, because they don't want people going and opening the doors. So this or the Hummer in the comments. I, I gave the audience a rough take on this one. I offered them this or that Hummer that was in a million pieces. Just imagine they were both in really nice shape. I like the Suburban, but let us know. What is this? Look, straight forward. Oh, this old American. Very cool car. It's it, always I, interesting. I, I'm amazed at the selection you have here. It's incredible. You'll find all sorts of different stuff here. And this is a testament to this. 
What is this? I this don't is even, a never heard of one of these things. Very cool looking car. All right, I am also stumped. A mirror? A mirror. Look at this. Wow. 59 Thunderbird, it says here. It looked like a Thunderbird. So I noticed on the sticker it said that the loss type was mechanical, an insurance company car here. It's in exceptional condition inside and out, really. This looks, look, yeah, that's the layout of the dash there in the picture. I want to see if we can pop the hood and see if there's anything we can see. Oh, the hood is here. The reason why the hood won't pop is because it's already popped. Let's see. Look at that, how clean it is in there. Wow. Look at that. So so this does, has definitely been restored. So it's a mechanical problem. And is it just me or look at this? Did this burn up? This line here. This is It looks really clean. Really There's nothing nice. I mean, physically So wrong. Sam, if you had this car, what would you do with it? Just put another engine in this kind of thing? Would it, well, that it would depends. be the cheapest way? You know, have a little look at it. If not, stick another new engine what what do you guys love doing here when ls swap ls swap but when you see an insurance company totaling out a car for mechanical purposes obviously this car had some special insurance on it you got to check out what's wrong scott you can't just go engine swapping i mean look at this thing somebody spent some real money on this in the first place could it be trash on the inside sure but it all depends and it depends how exclusive this is let us know in the comments what in the heck we're even looking at here it's clearly a thunderbird it's really in beautiful condition definitely been restored but past that i don't know what i'd even do with this ferrari swap it i know someone's got a spare ferrari engine i do I do. And just like most of you, I'm very enthusiastic about the prospect of cheap supercars. But if you've noticed over the last few years, my content has shifted between a mix of the supercars that I have and some cheap projects like the one back there. Again, it's just that the salvage auction has become a very difficult place to actually shop to justify a good deal. I always want the story to make sense to you guys. And if you like that theme, be sure to hit the like button. There are still deals to be had out there, even at the salvage auction. The one instance I can tell you where a supercar can be had quite a bit cheaper and still at the salvage auction are the flood damage cars. And the problem with the flood damage cars is that the risk level is much higher than a crash damage car because you can obviously see the damage in a crash damage car where with a flood car, it is a complete roll of the dice unless you're able to put your hands on it before you actually buy it. Coming up soon, I have two salvage supercars, one I've had stashed away since over two years ago, the other one I just picked up from a good friend of mine. And it's one of those ones that has those carbon rotors. And unfortunately, in the pictures, they didn't look damaged and three out of the four are toast. So this one's not gonna be cheap, but I'm working to get it done on a budget like usual. Be sure you follow me over on Instagram to see pictures of these projects before anything goes live here on YouTube. Guys, I can't thank each and every one of you enough for watching today. I'll catch you very soon. <music>